Hello again. Introduced late World War II, you have your second pattern, Canadian English high power automatic pistol holster. Um, the first pattern of this holster was a uh, part of a Canadian contract to supply the Chinese, which fell through. And what the Canadians found out, the first pattern of this holster was insufficient for holding the gun properly. So they came up with the second pattern holster in late World War II. The first pattern holster resembled the second pattern holster, but the first pattern holster did not have this additional securing flap. In some time late World War II, out comes a second pattern holster, which is the more commonly found English high power holster. On the back, you have the usual 37 pattern belt fittings with an additional tunnel which enables the Canadian soldier to wear it on a belt other than the 37 pattern. So you can wear it on a 37 pattern belt or just a normal belt. That gives him the ability to do so. On the front, you have a flap over top. You have this pull tab with a phenol Bakelite section to it. Indicates a late war holster. You've got a metal fastening there, which holds everything down. When you pull the tab, it not only releases the flap, it releases this protective side piece as well. Under the flap, you have the Canadian acceptance stamp, which is a letter C with a broad arrow. You have the maker's initials Z, L and T, limited 1945, which is Zephyr Loom and Tile Company limited most of these surviving holsters seem to have this manufacturer and date in it um, an additional marking you may find in it is tpl stamped in black if it's stamped tpl it means it's been coated with an insecticide for tropical issue because it was it was intended that prior to the dropping of the atom bomb the Canadians were meant to go to the Pacific Theatre in 1946 and so the equipment was impregnated with an insecticide and the equipment that was impregnated with insecticide will be stamped in black ink TPL for tropical. However, when the atom bomb was dropped, it kind of knocked the idea on the head for the Canadians to go to the Pacific and they didn't go. However, tropical treated holsters would still remain to be issued that's why you find some with the additional letters tpl underneath it the protector flap which was added to the second pattern comes open like that and it gives you access to the gun you have an additional sewn in little tunnel that goes all the way down the bottom that's to hold the clearing rod in this section here you have a tin box with an open top that's where your spare mag goes. The tin box protects the mag and your gun barrel goes down there. So that's the Canadian World War II second pattern English high power holster. It would later be copied by the British in olive webbing and the variation will be issued as part of the 1958 pattern British webbing equipment. But a 1958 pattern British Browning high power holster is not a World War II Canadian English high power holster. These are now getting very scarce. There are reproductions on the market, but that's a nice, genuine, honest example. Second pattern Canadian English high power holster. Bye for now.